This is Jay Randall Wilkerson, <coughs> author of the Heart Failure Recovery Plan, Successful Heart Regeneration Using Metabolic Enzymes. This is part number 44 in a 58-part video series of the entire book, chapter by chapter. Please view our introductory video on our channel for background information. We're next going to look at obesity. <coughs> this is under the chapter 9 which deals with lifestyle choices. Obesity is a radioactive topic in recent years. There are dozens of diets promoted to stop obesity. And yet it seems to be completely out of control. Even doctors withhold direct advice to patients for fear of offending their customers. <coughs> I cannot do that. Obesity kills a person with heart failure faster than anything else. Getting down to business, if your weight is higher than a body mass index of 28, you must lose weight to survive. If you were diagnosed with congestive heart failure and it's recent, then most likely you have excess fluids in your chest adding 10 or 20 pounds of extra weight. That is not your regular body weight. Your doctor will most likely start a course of medications to lose the fluids. <clears throat> These are called diuretics. Magnesium and potassium listed in this book also mobilize your kidneys to flush out excess fluids. After you've lost the fluid, it is time to establish a baseline of weight and to start losing. Your BMI target goal is 20 to 24. This greatly reduces back pressure on your heart to recovery levels. I personally try to maintain between 21 and 23. If your height is 5 foot 8 inches, then your weight should be 158 pounds or less. If your height is 6 feet, then your weight should be 177 pounds or less. I used to work <coughs> with Invacare Corporation as a director of engineering and product design until Medicare cut back reimbursement for medical products. We made 84,000 medical beds each year for a population under 250 pounds in weight. Sales asked us to design a stronger bed one that could handle heavier patients. And they only estimated what would have been a, a somewhat ridiculous in retrospect number of beds per month. It turned out the estimate was under by a factor of 10. <clears throat> we actually had to produce 10 times as many as projected. Excess body weight imposes the load on the heart muscle pump by increasing the number of arteries like an irrigation system. Say for example, <coughs> every neighbor in your community hooked up to your irrigation system. The water pressure to all the lawns would be too low to keep the grass alive. An obese person is like a giant irrigation system that weighs two or three times the normal standard body weight. Therefore, all of those extra arteries are inducing a load that cannot survive. The heart just simply struggles and struggles and strives and works hard and then dies. It's called sudden death. The metabolic enzymes in this heart failure recovery plan can help, but they can only do so much if your body exceeds its design limits by a factor of two or three times. Everyone who carries excess weight to obesity did not decide to become a heavyweight. They did not decide to become obese. If you travel to international countries, you will find little to no obesity among their populations. They eat healthy, they exercise a lot. The first time I went to France for a one-week vacation, I was shocked when I returned to the Charles de Gaulle airport in Paris to return home. Suddenly I saw very heavy obese persons in the corridor, Americans returning home. Then it hit me. I did not see any heavy, overweight French citizens all week. I had traveled from one end of the country to the other. No obesity. The French diet contains very rich foods, animal fats, butter, wonderful pastries, cakes. Yet they use self-control to limit the quantity. They use smaller plates to limit what they put on the plate. And they walk several miles every day. They eat meats grown in pastures, grass-fed meats that are high in omega-3 fats. They concentrate on eating fresh vegetables from local farms and family gardens. And there's no high fructose corn syrup in France at the time. None. So <clears throat> think of it this way. You can change your diet and change your activity 
and therefore lose the weight. Anyone who says otherwise simply does not understand. They simply do not realize that obesity did not exist a few decades ago. It did not exist, so today's situation is not anything like a disease that is spreading among the population. It is simply a dietary uh, system that has been forced upon Americans, and now we have to take action to stop it. Each pound of body fat holds 3,500 calories in storage. <clears throat> so if you reduce your diet 500 calories per day and increase exercise 500 calories each day, you will lose 2 pounds each week, or 100 pounds per year. So what does 500 calories of exercise look like? If a person weighs 180 pounds, they will burn 500 calories in 40 minutes on a bicycle. This is at a modest speed of 14 miles per hour. Racers are doing almost twice that amount. You could bicycle almost 10 miles in that time, so if you work within 10 miles, you could bicycle to work and lose 8 to 15 pounds each month. Walking burns 100 calories per mile, so 5 miles per day burns off a pound per week, 52 pounds each year. Besides weight loss, all of the exercise mentioned makes your heart stronger and stronger. There's a bicyclist who passed my home every day around 9 a.m. He lives in a town 8 miles away, and I know he covers over 20 to 30 miles every day. He's over 80 years old, and he's over 80 years old because he bicycles every day. Not in a big hurry, just steady, constant exercise. He never gets bored. He changes his roots. He gets to see all of the wildlife outside and listen to the birds. It's beyond the scope of this book to discuss all the opportunities to lose weight and to lose an obese situation. But the following list of books tells you of the conspiracy to create an obese population of consumers. Consumers who have become slaves to addictive foods. The Wheat Belly book, the latest one is Total Health. as by William Davis. There's The Grain Brain, The Surprising Truth About Wheat, Carbs, and Sugar by David Perlmutter, M.D. Salt, Sugar, Fat, How the Food Giants Hooked Us by Michael Moss. The Hibernation Diet, It Works While You Sleep by Mike and Stuart McInnes. The Big Fat Surprise, Why Butter, Meat, and Cheese Belong in a Healthy Diet by Nina Teckholz. If you have a genuine hormone disease that a doctor can name, still change your diet to lose the excess weight. Stop eating anything made with wheat, sugar, and packaged processed foods. Your weight will fall rapidly. And don't fool yourself. <clears throat> I had an overweight friend who skipped meals every day because he genuinely thought he was dieting. He did not count snack calories as food. A whole bag of chips, a half gallon of soda every night did not count to him as eating anything in his mind. He fooled himself into binging out of control. Heart failure recovery requires dietary discipline. If food is your life, change the type and quantity of food. Make it richer but less of it so that you enjoy what you do eat. To recover from heart failure, you must eat right. Avoid all fraudulent dietary teachings fed to the American public. Even the food pyramid promoted by the U.S. Department of Agriculture is based on false theories started in the 1950s by a professor at the University of Minnesota. This is in the book, The Big Fat Surprise. Yes, we have been used, used by large corporations to make money. And it's up to us to stop it, and if you wish to recover from heart failure recovery, you have to. You must reduce the weight and reduce the fats that are bad for you. This is J. Randall Wilkerson, The Heart Failure Recovery Plan, Successful Heart Regeneration Using Metabolic Enzymes. This book is available on Amazon in print and Kindle editions, from the Apple iTunes Store in the iBooks edition, from eBay in a print edition, and from the publisher, Wilkerson & Hughes, P.O. Box 777, Altoona, Florida, 32702. Just send a check for $24 to cover the shipping and handling. And you may have wondered why we publish this from our own print shop. It's very difficult to expose major corporations 
like those that have created obesity if you published through regular publishing channels because they do have fingers in all corporate offices throughout this earth. Thank you for listening.